And to discuss about World Prevention Suicide Day, joining us in the studio today is Benny Prawiraciao. He is the founder of Into the Light Community. So, Benny, welcome to our studio. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me here. So, so is it a community or an organization, actually? Yeah, so it, start, it was started as a community mm -hmm. and nowadays we yeah, establish as Yayasan. Yayasan, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, we've been working since 2013, so it's been a decade for now. Um, where, where did all of this come from? I mean, uh, what drive you to build this community at first? Yeah, back then in 2012, I had a friend who, who was suicidal. Yeah. Some friends were suicidal, and I was confused about how to handle the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So I tried to seek for more information. I kind of saw that the literacy of suicide is, was very low at the time. Yeah. Yet uh, the stigma, especially uh, among media and news, uh, is, was so concerning. So I decided to hold a seminar with my friends from other universities mm -hmm. to commemorate the World Suicide Prevention Days in 2013. I see. Now, um, Benny, can you, of course, before the, this community was um, uh, came together, I'm sure you did a lot of research, you and your friends. Can you tell us a little bit about your findings when you're uh, on the research on suicidal cases, especially maybe here if you want to highlight a little bit here in Indonesia? Yeah, actually, uh, the suicide around those times, back in a decade ago, there was very little suicide research in Indonesia. But nowadays, since the establishment of Into the Light, we produce more research of these very sensitive issues. And then we found out, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic back then, we had like 18 to 24 years old young people had more vulnerability to suicide and self-harm mm -hmm. during those times compared to other age group, mm -hmm. older age group. And then there's another research conducted by uh, another research center. They found that around more than 1% of adolescents age 10 to 17, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they had like suicidal ideation within the last 12 months during those times. So, yeah, actually we have this kind of situation yeah. around us. Yeah, we, we discussed several times that this is a sensitive topic, it's somewhat taboo. And if we compare it to uh, the year 2013, it's very different from nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's becoming more and more okay to discuss about mental health, about suicide, right? Yep. Um, and I believe that we have come so far to this stage, partly because of your hard work too, because yeah. you engage with uh, the society, right? How did you, how did you do it? How, what, what steps did you take um, during those years mm -hmm. uh, to make people more aware of this issue? Okay, as I mentioned before that the research about this topic was very scarce and mm -hmm. rare. So we utilize live experiences okay. as stories mm. to deliver. So, you know, um, people really love stories yes. and they kind of find it relatable with their emotions, with their being as human. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, sometimes it also relates to their condition. So it kind of open their heart. Yeah. And when their heart was open, we kind of have this list of actions driven by data and research results. So we can we kind of drive the actions informed by the scientific methods and perspective after we try to convince them through these stories and life experiences. I see. And speaking of data, uh, is it easy for the Yayasan mm -hmm. to find out about the number of suicide that is um, happening in the country? Uh, is it easy? Can you tr keep track on the, um, I mean, is, is it getting more and more each year or it's decreasing? Tell us more about it. 
Yeah, it's quite a tricky situation in Indonesia since we do not have any national registry for suicide and death or any kind of suicide behavior on national level. But then we tried our best to address the issue on specific group level, such as the young people that I mentioned before. And we also tried to identify which are the vulnerable groups and what can, how high the suicide rate is. Mm -hmm. And what kind of vulnerability that they have, any kind of risk factor that they have within those specific subgroups. It is much more feasible, okay. right, rather than trying to capture everyone yeah. in the place at the, at the same time. Okay. Uh, I'm, well, I'm gonna get back to that, but right now mm -hmm. we're thinking. I'm thinking that um, on a daily basis, we we feel stressed, mm -hmm. right? We feel depressed, yeah. and sometimes, I mean, I can speak, for, you know, uh, from my own experience that we sometimes doesn't, we don't really know the, um, you know, the the borderline, the line between being stressed that you need help or you don't really need to. So, can you tell us a little bit? Um, the signs, the details of, of when somebody might need to seek professional help. Generally speaking, uh, there, there will be a lot of significant and unusual behavioral changes when we are overwhelmed by situations and stress and all stuff. So when our mental health issue is dropping down, mm -hmm. falling down, we kind of have these symptoms or signs. For example, we might have changes in our sleep patterns. Yeah. We can, we kind of overslept or maybe it's kind of hard for us to sleep. Yeah. Or on the other hand, we on one hand, we might overeat. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we might kind of hard to have any kind of appetite yeah, on eating. Yeah. So those, uh, those two things are the most uh, usual and common mm -hmm. signs of we are being overstressed. Sleep and eating. And other things so I suggest you start to you know, uh, hard to focus on things mm -hmm. right. and you kind of feel that uh, it's kind of hard for you to be more productive right. compared to any other days mm -hmm. and then you find it, you might also find it hard to relate to people. It's kind of hard for you to have the energy to catch up with people right. or even to just listen to them. So yeah, <laughs> those kind of symptoms, signs if I right. may say. Uh, are the right indicators yeah. for you to just have a checkup with the professionals. Um, when you say professionals, does it mean a psychologist or a psychiatrist? Which one? Yeah, that depends on the situation, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. If you feel like you, you just need to fan out mm -hmm. and you really want to know what kind of life that you want to go to, sometimes, you know, people just feel lost in their life. Maybe you can just go to the clinical psychologist. I see. Yeah. Okay. And then, but then if you have more severe symptoms like hard to sleep, you find it hard to sleep lately, or you might find it uh, some suicidal thoughts, for example, even, right. or thoughts being paranoid of being, you know, hunt down for some, by something. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you might need a help from psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You told us earlier. Um, about what, what drove you to build this community is mm -hmm. that from your stories, from your closest friends, uh, that they, uh, they wanted to do the suicide, right? Um, we sometimes cannot prevent that from happening yes. to us too. Sometimes maybe, maybe in the future, mm -hmm. we will encounter that situation, the mm -hmm. same situation that you faced. Now, do you have any tips perhaps for us how to be a good uh, friend, let's say, a right. good friend to someone who is having suicidal thoughts. And maybe if the case is the person who has the suicidal thought, if he or she is willing to, you know, to speak and tell us the story, maybe that's easier for us yeah. to identify. But that's sometimes not the that's not always the case. Exactly. Yes. Earlier, our friend Yasha told us that um, he had this one friend always always happy right. and never showed any symptoms mm -hmm. like you mentioned mm -hmm. but then he committed suicide mm -hmm. so could you please enlighten us regarding this matter yeah uh the thing with suicide warning signs they are not always you know shown to us because right. maybe we have another different of emotional distance with this person mm -hmm. we cannot right. see that because we are not close enough right. we, we cannot judge whether they kind 
they have any kind of behavioral changes. But generally speaking, generally speaking, when they start to say something dark about their self, mm. useless, being a burden, or dark about their future, mm. it is like a trap, they're feeling trapped, or they feel like the future will be worthless, or you know, uh, there's nothing good in the future, or about the people around them, does nobody care about them, right. or everyone feel, might feel better if they do not exist. And they start to say something related to that, even in a joke, <laughs> even, in, yeah, even in a dark joke. Right. The, we have to take it seriously. seriously yeah. yeah, but then again, that kind of emotional distance issues might uh, unable us or un make us unable to see that kind of signs yeah, because yes. we are not close enough. Right. So it's not our fault actually yeah. if that kind of things happen. Thus, yeah. if we see these signs, mm -hmm. then we have to start asking them, what happened to you? I saw, I see that you have changed lately. Maybe you haven't talked m as much as usual to us. Uh, but then I saw some uh, posts that is quite dark mm -hmm. for you to think about it. Yeah. Uh, it is not usual. Right. Then just show them that you care, that you sh that you observe the changes, yes. and then we can start to talk more about how are you actually. Are, are you seriously okay? You can talk to me if it doesn't anything happen. And if they do, you know, come out with their vulnerability and with their suicidality, then you can ask them to refer them to the professionals. Or if you don't have the resources and the time, maybe you can offer yourself right. being a companion to go to those professionals because it's right. not easy and it's uh, oftentimes still unfortunately associated with shame and yeah. stigma, yes. right? Yeah. right? So it's not easy for all some people to take the first step, mm -hmm. yes. but then we can be a good companion for that. So it That's starts true. with a simple gesture, simple just by gesture, asking, yes. how are you? Yes, Showing exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. Well, well <laughs> you're it's, speechless. It's, I mean, no, no, I think I got one more before I think we go to a break. Um, I was referring to her earlier. Uh, we see, sometimes we see the signs, sometimes we just see the symptoms now. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you kind of uh, answered it a little bit just now. So, mm -hmm. the emotional distance, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm with that one person, it's not that close. So, mm -hmm. it doesn't really trigger me to come find out a little bit more about that person. But if, uh, if there is actually a chance for um, somebody uh, to do something right there and then, is that, is that something that is advisable to do or Perhaps not. Yeah, of course, there are things that we can do. Actually, uh, the team of our World Suicide Prevention Day is creating hope to action. Mm. So it's about active listening, mm -hmm. non judging them. Do not judge them, even though they go through hell because right. of their own fault. Right. Yeah. We quote unquote. But it's not our place to judge them. Yes. It's not our place to judge whatever they have done. So let them fan out mm -hmm. safely and uh, make sure that we do not, uh, you know, uh, break the confidentiality unless it, they already show some kind of harm to right. themselves. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that also depends on the level of risk. If it is high risk and they show any attempt mm -hmm. of suicide or clear planning of suicide, okay. then we must, uh, yeah, then we must show, that we must tell them that uh, we actually care about you and we need to know about where you are now, what are you doing and how can I make you safe. Right. Mm. Now, um, what is actually the root cause of suicides? Do not answer that yet because we are going for another break. Please do not go anywhere. Stay right here on a three-hour news show on C Today.